Arc 3.0 has brought us some fun and amazingly broken builds over the past few months, but Season 18 is finally coming to an end, which means as always like every season here, it's time to conclude our build playlist for this season. So in this video we'll be looking at the top 3 builds from Season 18 that you could potentially use in Season 19, and like always, these builds are what I personally think are the best from Season of Plunder, in order, and for PvE. The builds listed here will also be optimised for usage next season, and well, any season in the future, as they don't rely heavily on specific seasonal mods. There will also be cards popping up on screen during the video as well, so if you want to make these builds the best right now for the remainder of Season 18, then those separate videos will do just that. All timestamps and dim links are in the description too, but now guys don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe and share for more, and now let's start our top 3. So firstly I will mention that the full playlist of all builds from this season are linked down below, so if you want to have a good build specifically for season 18, then you'll find all the best builds that are out right now in that playlist. And keep an eye out here on the channel, because the new season 19 build playlist will also be coming out very soon. But guys I do also want to mention that the builds shown here are recorded from season 18, and they will be optimised or slightly changed to suit any season you wish to use the build in, as a sort of like starting base or a template, where you can then make small changes to include any new seasonal mods to enhance the build further. But Starting the top 3 for the third place, we have a Hunter Arc melee build featuring Assassin's Cow. Now the Hunter Arc melee build pre-Arc 3.0 was actually really good as it was, but with the introduction to Arc 3.0 we got quite a lot of improvements, not just for the Hunter, but for the abilities as well like Storm Grenades, and now using the new system of Aspects and Fragments, we can really develop these builds to our liking, which is why this build is going to be focused around getting a huge damage increase for a melee, while also being able to go invisible. So we'll be hitting adds pretty hard with our melee ability, blinding them, becoming amplified, and going invisible with a bunch of other buffs on top which is just crazy how effective this build can be in endgame PvE. Now this is a master loss sector, and I can just run around insta-killing champions and bosses, which is beyond funny. I can't even explain the amount of damage we're causing, and how this is even possible, but it just is. Now you could argue that we have a 50% arc burn damage increase in the loss sector, which is fair, but taking this into a glassway master nightfall where there is no arc burn modifier present, we can still melt champions just as quick. In fact, heck, even taking this into a grand master class way, we can still achieve the same thing. Of course, you're easier to be killed, but I mean, just hit them first right, and you're good. The point is, the build as it is, is just insane, and you can use this in any season regardless of the modifiers, the mods we have available, and the activity type. I mean, we're not even using Elias Handshake, which would make this build even more powerful. So the way you'll use this build effectively is start by killing an ad with your melee. This will spawn in Arc Adam and a Well and make you invisible. Picking up the Well will give you increased melee damage, and then you'll dodge and repeat the same process two more times to stack up combination blow. Doing this on a loop will overcharge your ability, jolting enemies, blinding them, causing arc chains, making you invisible, giving you DPS puffs and damage resistance all at the same time, and then from here you'll just run around killing everything on a loop with one hit melee abilities. You can use a 1-2 punch shotgun as well to increase the damage even further, which I do recommend using. Now to set up this build, you'll want to start by running an arc subclass with the Gathering Storm super ability. Then you'll want a Gambler's Dodge, along with a Combination Blow melee, and a Storm Grenade. Then the aspects we have are Lethal Current and Flow State. In short, these will make your arc abilities a lot better. For the fragments we have Spark of Resistance, Spark of Shock, Spark of Feedback, and Spark of Magnitude. You also want to run a shotgun with a 1-2 punch for maximum effectiveness. Then the exotic your one is the Assassin's Cow, so that we can go invisible after each melee kill. Your alternative is Liar's Handshake for extra melee DPS. For the mods, the only things you'll really need are a hands-on in the helmet, a Reaping Wellmaker to spawn Void Wells, your Overload Champion mod, a Well of Tenacity for damage resistance when picking up the Void Wells, along with your actual damage resist mods that you have available, a Well of Irons for increased melee damage using Arc Wells, a Scavenger mod for your heavy weapon, and then a Melee Wellmaker to spawn in the Arc Wells. Any other mods you have, like Artifact mods to benefit the build further, are a bonus, but the stat mod you'll need will be 100 resilience, and that's pretty much it. The weapon choices are down to you, but that really depends on the activity you're playing. Just make sure you have your champion mods covered, because the melee build itself will take care of everything else, as long as there are adds around you in boss and champion fights, so you can actually buff up the DPS stats. So in second place, we have our Warlock Solar Fusion build featuring Starfire Protocol. Now if you follow along my build videos, you'll know that this is by far one of the best Warlock builds in the game, because the grenades are your DPS, which means it doesn't matter what weapons you run. Ideally, you want to run things like an SMG or auto rifle, because as you damage enemies in your rift, you'll get grenade energy, which will then be used to melt everything around you. So the way you want to use this build is basically start by getting a kill of your grenade. This will spawn two solar wells, and picking them up gives us health regen, and increases our super recharge rate. You'll then 
put down an empowering rift and then spam grenades at enemies while dealing damage to them to recharge the grenade. Killing adds with the grenade will recharge the rift and then you just repeat the process. One of the best DPS methods for warlocks who play solo. It's also amazing how quickly you can get super energy with each grenade kill. It's almost as if you're running a phoenix protocol but somehow better. But this is definitely one build you need to have if you main warlocks and end game PvE. Now to set up this build, you ideally want to run weapons that can deal damage quickly over time, like an auto rifle or SMG, but any weapon is fine though. From this subclass will be a solar well radiant super with the empowering rift, the melee ability will be the incinerator snap along with a fusion grenade, aspects are touch of flame and Icarus dash, then for the fragments you'll want ember of blistering, ember of char, ember of ashes and then ember of eruption. Overall these aspects and fragments are really going to enhance your fusion grenades and make them much more powerful. For the exotic you want to run a starfire protocol. This will give you an extra fusion grenade, the grenade kills recharge the rift and then dealing damage while inside that rift recharges the grenade. Lastly for the mods you'll want elemental ordnance to spawn in solar wells on grenade kills with two ashes to assets in the helmet. You 100% want these three mods. Then you want front of might if you're going to run solar weapons, a grenade kickstart and any champion mods that you need. In the chest we have well of life for health regen and then the damage resist mods that you have available. You also want to run a font of wisdom for the faster super recharge rate, then a bountiful wells to spawn more solar wells on those grenade kills along with two bomber mods in the class. Honestly a really good setup for any season and then using artifact mods you will be able to make the build even better if there is any good ones available but for these stats the only thing you want to invest into is the resilience because you'll have unlimited grenades and rifts and you'll get your super really fast anyway so the other stats just don't really matter. Now in first place this wouldn't be a top 3 build without somehow including the heart of the most light. I call this the titan rainbow ability build because the majority of times I can run the heart of the most light and have triple 100 stats for all 4 subclasses without changing any mods or subclass fragments. In some cases a few mods might need changing but that's about it. But you can use this build with any subclass because the way we have the base set up with the exotic and mods we can just spam abilities one after another and chain between them, all while increasing the damage output of those abilities and their recharge rate. For this build we'll be focused around Arc because Arc 3.0 and Titans right now is just pretty insane. Now with this build the way you'll use it is start by using any of your abilities like your melee, then throw a grenade and use your thruster right afterwards. Using each ability will empower the other abilities and it's pretty much just that simple and basic. Just spam your abilities over and over on a loop. Doing so will spawn void wells, arc wells, giving you damage resist, more ability energy and a damage increase all at the same time. Honestly it's a really good build to use with a team as well as playing solo and it just works great in all types of content, even Grandmaster Nightfalls. And the best part about this build is that you can use it with any subclass, whether you want infinite restoration with solar or you want infinite overshields with void then you can do just that, just swap the subclass. That's literally all you need to do because we'll use the exact same setup with Heart of Inmost Light. So to set up this one you'll want to run the subclass of your choice. This can be Solar, Arc, Void or even Stasis. Either way you'll get the same or similar stats that you've initially set up. But for this build we're going to go with the Arc subclass. Now we'll have an Arbalist to cover match game shields and barrier champs. The Arc primary weapon to cover your overloads whatever that may be in the season that you're playing. And then an Arc heavy weapon for DPS. We'll run a Thunder Crash super, a Thruster class ability, the Shoulder Charge melee, so that we can potentially kill our allies and then a storm grenade. Aspects are Touch of Thunder and Knockout, then the fragments are going to be Spark of Recharge, Spark of Magnitude, Spark of Resistance and then Spark of Focus. Overall this is going to make your abilities a lot better and recharge faster. For the exotic armor we have the Heart of Immerse Light so that we can make each ability better with damage and have a faster recharge rate and then the only mods you'll need for this one are a Reaping Wellmaker to spawn Void Wells, Elemental Armaments for Arc Wells, although a Melee Wellmaker and an Elemental Ordnance would be best, a Grenade Kickstart in the Gauntlets followed by your Champion mod that you need which would be an Overload or Unstoppable mod, a Radiant Light if going for the triple 100 stats, and then your damage resist mods that you have. You also want a Well of Tenacity for damage reduction with the Void Wells that we spawn, and then the class ones are going to be Font of Might for extra damage with Arc weapons, a Utility Kickstart and a Distribution. And with this build you'll get your abilities back a lot faster while improving the DPS and damage resistance, because the stats we have are 100 Resilience, 100 Discipline, and then ideally you want 100 Strength if you can. This is by far one of the best builds in the game and it's definitely worth having next season. Now if these aren't the builds that you're looking for then stay tuned here on the channel because I do cover new and updated builds every week and every season and you guys might just find your new best build. So guys that there is your top 3 builds this season and the top 3 builds that you should get ready for season 19. As always if you do like these videos and you want to see more like this then don't forget to stay tuned here on the channel and while you're here perhaps check out the playlist link down below as well so you can give your characters more builds to choose from. I also want to say a big thank you to everyone who has supported the channel 
and these builds over the past two years. It's been amazing making them for you all, and I can't wait to continue the series next season too, and this season onwards with Strand. Thank you guys, take care, have a good one, and I'll see you guys soon for season 19.